Well, Minnesota's pride on ice touches all corners of the state. It could be argued that its roots lie here, in Epilet. In the late 1940s, the same Iron Range community that sent Mariucci to the U was home to a schoolboy dynasty of legendary proportion. Not to be critical or, or demeaning of other teams in the state, but I think when we practiced or scrimmaged, we were probably playing against a, a better team or better players than maybe we might have played, you know, that coming weekend. In the post-war years, those Eveleth Golden Bears took the state high school tournament by storm, winning a still unmatched four consecutive championships. With no particular allegiance to the university, Eveleth stars Willard Eichela and John Matchiffs matriculated to Michigan. But John Mayasich came south, following his future bride to the Twin Cities. Soon after, gopher hockey became a hot commodity. I would say John Mayasich was, in my estimation, was greater than Gretzky. It's a little different now, the game. And to say that one player is greater than the other player is is pretty hard. But in our era, he was the Gretzky, and there was no comparison to anybody. John, I think, had, could do about anything well. <laughs> Any position outside a goalie. He tried that one time, once. In four years, John Mayasich turned the Gopher record book into his personal diary, setting standards for points and goals scored that still live today. Among the milestones, a six-goal game against Winnipeg and an eight-point effort against Michigan. I like it said that I was one of many to get the number of assists I had. Uh, you have to have some pretty good people out there putting it in the nets. Unquestionably, he did. In 1954, the Gophers boasted All-Americans in Mayasich, Ken Yackel, Jim Matson, and Dick Doherty. Dick could put the puck in the net. Just had a sense of the game. You know, I'm not going to compare him with a Gretzky, but you know, Gretzky isn't what you call brilliant. He just happens to be there. <laughs> Doherty happened to be everywhere. Gene Campbell was the captain and future Olympian. Wendell Anderson was a defenseman and future governor. Bob Johnson was a winger who would someday become a Badger. And Dick Meredith was a speedster who collected Olympic medals in both 1956 and 1960. Led by the tandem from Everleth, this impressive collection of talent put gopher hockey on the map. When uh, Mariucci came there in my sophomore years, the fans came there the more, not only to watch us, to watch Mariucci, because Mariucci was a show in himself. Mariucci replaced Doc Romnus in the fall of 1952. By March of 53, the Gophers had won their first of back-to-back -back WIHL championships and finished second to Michigan in the NCAA tournament. One year later, Minnesota returned to the Final Four with a vengeance, ripping favored Boston College 14 to one in the semifinals. Only a hot goaltender and an overtime loss to RPI prevented a national championship. And all my career, uh, I would say that uh, that was the toughest thing to take. And Mariucci took it very hard. That's the first time I ever saw John cry. <laughs>